Okay, welcome to the second part of the Ring 4 lesson. I will uh, teach you in the next few lectures uh, the conditional expectations and the martingales. And uh, since I don't expect that uh, you know much about uh, conditional expectations and probability in general, I will first uh, start uh, slowly and explain, give you some introduction in the conditional expectation. And uh, later in the further lectures, we will mm, use these notions to uh, study martingales. <coughs> So uh, everything that I will speak about you can find in the book by uh, Rick Duret called Probability and uh, Examples. And also if you learned, uh, want to learn more about uh, probability, this is a good source. Let me begin with some examples because conditional expectation is a rather abstract uh, uh, concept. Uh, so let's uh, first uh, consider a few examples. So as, as usual, I will denote by omega fp the probability space, the state of uh, mm. configurations, uh, sigma algebra and the probability measure on the sigma algebra. The first example I will consider, I take two events A and B in the sigma algebra such that the probability of B is positive and uh, I define the conditional probability of A given the event B as the probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of B. That's how it's usually done in the first probability course that uh, if, for instance, uh, we have uh, a probability space which describes uh, coin tosses, then you can uh, think about event B as the event that in the first uh, two coin tosses there is at least one head and event A will be the um, event that the first uh, toss gave you a head. So this way you can, you can compute, uh, so if you compute the probability of A, it will give you one half, of course, but if you compute the conditional probability, then it will be bigger, so it changes. And the uh, event B, uh, information which we obtain from event B, um, uh, has some effect on the probability of the event A. And then uh, similarly, uh, we can define the expectation of a random variable X with respect to event B as just uh, the integral with respect to uh, this conditional probability measure. It's the expectation of X times the indicator of the event B divided by the probability of B. And here indicator of B is just a random variable which has uh, two values. It's one if omega is in B and zero if omega is not in B. It's called the indicator of event B. So that's uh, how would you uh, define the um, expectation, conditional expectation with respect to some event. What we want to do, we want to do more. We want to uh, understand uh, conditional expectation of a variable uh, with respect to uh, more general information, for instance, uh, with respect to the value of uh, another random variable. So our aim is to define conditional expectation of uh, y with respect to some variable x, for instance. When, uh, to make sense of uh, what it means, if we condition on the value of random variable x, then uh, uh, what would be the value of random variable um, y. And uh, more general, conditioning on several random variables and on some uh, uh, arbitrary collections of events. To get to this uh, point, let me consider some special cases when random variable x has uh, some particular distribution. So the first case we look at is when x has a um, discrete distribution 
Namely, uh, x just takes some values, uh, x1, x2, x, xn, and so on, with some positive probabilities pn. Then these are, this is just a collection of events, and we can define the expectation of y with respect to the event that x is equal to xn, as usual as above, expectation of y times the indicator that x is xn divided by pn. So nothing new, that's, uh, that's already written above. But now uh, this tells us that uh, if a random variable x takes the value xn, then the conditional expectation of y is given by this thing, which let me denote it by yn. So then it makes sense to uh, think about conditional expectation of y with respect to x as some function which uh, assigns yn uh, uh, every time x is equal to xn. So then uh, what we do, we define expectation of y given x as uh, yn if x is equal to xn. Or there is a compact way to write it. You can actually uh, write it down in one formula as sum over all n, yn times the indicator that x is equal to xn. So now uh, this is uh, not just a number, it's a function such that if x is equal to xn, then this function takes value yn. Note that in this case, expectation of y given x is a measurable function only of a random variable x. One more example, if we have two random variables x and y uh, which have uh, densities. And uh, moreover, uh, we, they have joint density f of x, y. If some notation is not clear to you, you just uh, interrupt me because uh, I don't know what the uh, previous uh, lecture, what kind of notation he was using. So suppose that we have two random variables uh, with joint density f of x, y. Then the density of the random variable x, uh, of course, uh, can be recovered by integration with respect to y of the density f. And uh, then it makes sense to define the conditional density of uh, uh, y with respect to, to x as follows f y given x will be just f of x y divided by f x x. For each fixed x, I can uh, define this number. Well, if for, for some x this density is equal to zero, then we define uh, uh, this ratio to be zero. But in general, uh, for arbitrary x, we have such, such an expression, and if we integrate with respect to uh, y, then we get one. So this is a, a probability density. And uh, you, can, you can see it on the picture as follows, that if I have x and y, and if I have some type of uh, density f x y, then for, by fixing x, I will get a certain profile. And uh, if I integrate uh, this profile, then in general, I will get something which is not one. So I need to normalize uh, by the total mass to get one. And then, uh, and then this gives me precisely this function f y x. And then uh, if we have a conditional density, we can define the conditional 
expectation of uh, y with respect to x as follows conditional expectation of y given x equal to x can be defined as uh, g of x equal to the integral of y with respect to this conditional density. It's like the usual expectation except that now we use the conditional uh, density. Here this is a function of uh, x and uh, then we can define expectation of y given x expectation with respect to random variable x as g when we substitute uh, random variable x in there. So again we get uh, again expectation y with respect to x is a measurable function of x. But uh, notice the difference between the two examples. In this example it was uh, important that the probability that x is equal to xn is positive. In this example x uh, is uh, a random variable with a density so probability that x is equal to any number x is just zero. So in principle we cannot uh, use the same approach and condition on the event of probability zero in this example. So these are two different, uh, two different approaches to conditional expectation. And now, uh, so what I want to do, I want to build up on this example some general definition which uh, will uh, um, for which these two uh, examples will be some special cases and um, also uh, this definition will include uh, conditional expectations with respect to more information than just one random variable but uh, several random variables or general sigma algebras. So I need to recall some facts and introduce some notation so if we have a probability space and uh, we have a random variable x, so the measurable map from omega to r, and uh, then uh, I denote by uh, calligraphic g the sub-sigma algebra of f. So f is a collection of events, uh, g is a sub-collection of the events and uh, the, those events satisfies the relations uh, of the uh, sigma algebra. You all remember what, uh, what it is? Yes. So now I, I say that uh, x is uh, measurable with respect to G if for any B in the Borel sigma algebra X to the minus one of B belongs to G. So in general uh, um, X uh, is a random variable if uh, the pre-image of any Borel measurable set is in the sigma algebra F. Now uh, they are in G. It means that if I want to determine the distribution of random variable x, then I just need to know the values of p on the sigma algebra g. And I will use the notation notation that I will use is x belongs to g. So it's a bit, uh, um, it's a convention that I'll use. And then uh, the smallest smallest sigma algebra uh, with which x, uh, with respect to which x is measurable will be denoted by sigma of x. This is a collection of x minus 1 b such that b is the rel. This is uh, uh, sigma algebra 
generated by x. Sigma of x is the smallest sigma algebra which satisfies this property. Now I, I need some, uh, some fact. As I, as I say, uh, if uh, one has a, um, a random variable uh, which is uh, measurable with respect to sigma algebra g, then we actually don't need to know the, the full probability measure p, but just its restriction to the, uh, to the sigma algebra g. proposition. In fact, uh, the distribution of uh, x g measurable is uniquely determined by the following numbers, expectation of x times the indicator c where C is uh, an event in G. So if I, if I can compute all, this, uh, all these numbers, then uh, if I have two random variables, X and Y, uh, G measurable, then uh, all those numbers for them should coincide. Proof. So assume that uh, we have two random variables, x and y, g measurable, such that for some um, such that uh, these expectations coincide, for all c, and uh, these two random variables are not equal, which means every time I say that two random variables are equal means uh, up to events of probability zero. So there exists positive epsilon such that the probability that x minus y bigger than epsilon is bigger than epsilon. So assume that we have two random variables which are not equal and uh, but all these expectations coincide then we take this as one of the events. This is an event in G. So let C be this event, X minus Y is bigger than epsilon. Then we get a contradiction. So that's a simple exercise. I will not uh, put the details. So if we have a G measurable random variable, then its distribution is uniquely determined by such expectations. And now I want to come back to the examples that I considered first and uh, compute what these expectations are if uh, instead of X there, I take the conditional expectation. Question? Yes. Yeah. So you just, I mean, do you really need an exterior of sign or just positive? You could take positive. Okay. If it's positive, it's bigger than epsilon. I mean, there's twice epsilon. I mean, that the probability is positive. Yes. And that's the same epsilon. So, I mean, that the, I mean, it's not epsilon. You could take a, two epsilons and then take a minimum of them. Okay, so let's come back to the examples. So the first example that I introduced was conditional expectation of y with respect to x, and that was equal to the sum over all n, yn, 
times the indicator that x is xn, where yn is just the expectation of y with respect to the event uh, that x is equal to xn. So the first observation is that this expectation is sigma x measurable. So this is, a, this is a random variable which is measurable with respect to sigma algebra generated by x. And it means by, uh, by this proposition that uh, it's, its distribution is uniquely determined by such uh, expectation. So let me compute uh, what those expectations are. Let C be an event in the sigma algebra. Let C be an event in the sigma algebra, and uh, I want to compute this expectation. <coughs> So what is that? This is just uh, expectation over sum over all n y n times the indicator x equal to x n times the indicator of c. This is equal to sum over all n. I uh, substitute the expression for y n. It's going to be the expectation of x of uh, y times the indicator that x n is equal to x n divided by the probability that x n is equal to x n multiplied by, by the expectation of this indicator which is just the probability that xn is equal to xn and intersect it with the event C. Now, uh, what is the event C? C is just uh, is an event in the sigma algebra generated by X. So it's the pre-image of uh, some uh, Borel measurable set with respect to X. Uh, so uh, since C is an element of the sigma algebra generated by X, there exists a Borel set B such that c is equal to x minus 1 of b. And then the probability that x, why am I writing? The probability that x is equal to xn intersection with c will be equal to the probability that x is equal to xn, uh, x belongs to c. This is probability that x is equal to xn. xn is in C, uh, x is in B. And uh, and then uh, xn is in B, does not uh, uh, is not a, is not a random uh, random is not an event. It's just a, uh, it's just a deterministic uh, relation. So if xn is in B, then uh, we can uh, drop it out from the probability. And if xn is not in B, then this probability is zero. So we can write this as the probability that x is equal to xn multiplied by the indicator that xn is in B. So, like this. 
And now uh, I see that uh, I have probability x equal to xn in the denominator, and uh, also I have it here. So I can cancel, and I continue that my expectation is equal to sum over all n, expectation y times the indicator that x is equal to xn, multiplied by the indicator that xn is in b. Following the same logic, I can uh, take this uh, constant and put it inside the expectation. So I will have sum over all n, expectation of y times the indicator that x is equal to xn, times the indicator that xn is in b. And now, uh, since I have uh, the indicator that x is equal to xn and xn is in b, I can replace this xn by uh, the random variable x. So this gives me sum over all n expectation y times the indicator that x is equal to xn times the indicator that x is in b. What is this event that x is in b? What is this event that x is in b? It's just the event c. So I can, I can write it as uh, expectation y. This is just c, expectation y times the indicator of c times the sum over all n, indicator that x is equal to xn. This sum is equal to what? Sum over all n indicator that x is equal to xn. Hmm? It's one. So we get expectation y times the indicator of c. Is something not clear in the notation? or too fast? So what do we, what do we have in the end is that we obtain that for any c in the sigma algebra generated by x, expectation of uh, this uh, conditional expectation of y with respect to x multiplied by the indicator of c equals to the expectation of y times the indicator of c. So we know that, uh, uh, that uh, the distribution of uh, the random variable sigma x measurable is uniquely determined by all these objects. And we see that uh, actually these objects are equal to some objects which are simpler because they only involve random variable y and not, uh, uh, and not this conditional expectation. So it's a bit early to make uh, conclusions uh, from, uh, from this identity, but uh, you should remember it. And uh, let me point out that uh, from this and, uh, and this proposition, we cannot conclude that this means that the expectation of y given x is almost surely equal to y. Because uh, we know that this is a sigma x measurable, but y is not. Okay, let's look at the example with densities. In this case, expectation y given x is just g of x, where g is uh, the integral 
y f y given x dy and it's just the integral over r y f x y dy divided by uh, the f x x. So now let me let me do the same uh, calculation for uh, for this object. Again, I take a set C in the um, sigma algebra generated by X, and uh, so C would be equal to X in B for some B Borel measurable. And uh, then I compute this expectation. This is equal to the expectation of G X times the indicator of C. And uh, by the definition of the expectation, since a uh, random variable X has density, we can write it as an integral with respect to the density. So it's integral over R G, actually integral. over b, g of x, f, x, x, dx. So that's, uh, that's the definition of the expectation. And now if I substitute g of x equal to that, I see that uh, here in the bottom I have f, uh, the density of f, and here I multiply it by the density of f, so it will cancel out. So that will be just the integral over b of uh, in integral over b, integral over r, y f x y uh, dy dx. I can rewrite it as the integral over R2, Y indicator that X is in B, F, X, Y, dy, dx. And uh, this is just the indicator of the event C. So this is integral over R2, Y indicator C, F of X, Y, dx dy and this is just the expectation we are averaging with respect to the joint density of uh, uh, x and y so this is just the expectation of uh, of this function That equals expectation of y times the indicator of c. Again, we have uh, the same equality that uh, uh, this expectation equals to the expectation of y times indicator c for any c in the sigma algebra generated by x. And uh, the idea of uh, this abstract uh, conditional expectation is to turn this logic around and uh, assume that the uh, conditional expectation of y with respect to random variable x for an arbitrary random variable x is some uh, random variable measurable which, with respect to sigma algebra generated by x which satisfies all these identities. So that's the logic uh, and uh, of course the question is whether uh, such random variable exists. So the existence was not discussed uh, yet here. In these two examples the existence was given to us by explicit formulas. But now I want to uh, somehow, um, given the existence, 
I want to take this uh, relation as a definition. A theorem, so let uh, omega fp be a probability space y some integrable uh, random variable and uh, g sub sigma algebra then there exists a random variable z g measurable such that expectation z indicator c equals expectation y indicator c for any c in, in g. That's the theorem which gives us uh, existence of a random variable which satisfies such relations for any integrable random variable y. So, and from the proposition that I wrote here, this random variable is unique, almost surely. So it means that uh, for each y, we have a unique z. And this unique z is called the conditional expectation of y with respect to x. Note that by the proposition, uh, if z, uh, z is uh, almost surely unique, so it is, uh, it is called conditional. expectation of uh, y with respect to sigma algebra g. And the notation that, uh, that we use is expectation y given g. In particular, if, uh, if we take the sigma algebra g to be sigma algebra generated by some random variable, then we get uh, the expect conditional expectation of one variable given another variable. So this is a more general definition. Okay, uh, yes, let me remark that uh, if uh, G is a sigma algebra generated by X, then the expectation of Y with respect to G is often denoted by expectation of Y given X. And uh, also one could, one could define conditional probability of some event. So if A is the event, some event in sigma algebra f, then the probability of the event A given sigma algebra g is just the expectation of the indicator A given g. That's, uh, that's the convention. Now, uh, let me give you the proof of, uh, of this theorem. So let's uh, first uh, take a random variable y, which is greater or equal to zero, almost surely. 
And let's look at the uh, right hand side uh, here. Then if we change, uh, if we look at all possible events C, then uh, what uh, these expressions give us is some finite uh, measure defined on the sigma algebra uh, G. Q of C equal to the expectation of Y indicator C is a finite measure on omega G. And moreover, for any C such that probability of C is equal to zero, we also have Q of C equal to zero. It means that if we denote by P tilde the, uh, the measure, probability measure, restricted to the sigma algebra generated by, uh, to the sigma algebra G, then for any event in the sigma algebra, if PC is zero, then QC is zero. So it means that uh, Q is absolutely continuous with respect to P tilde. And for two absolutely continuous uh, measures, we know uh, the theorem of uh, radon nikodym which uh, gives us the existence of uh, a derivative of uh, one measure with respect to another. Well, uh, which basically gives us the existence of such a random variable set. Basically, uh, if, if y is uh, greater or equal to zero, almost surely this is nothing but uh, a corollary of uh, rather Nicodem uh, a theorem, which uh, um, precisely states that there exists a, a random variable measurable with respect to sigma algebra G, such that our measure Q is just the um, integral of uh, uh, Z uh, times this uh, indicator C. And this Z is, uh, is often called the derivative uh, uh, of uh, measure Q with respect to measure P tilde. And you may see the notation like this. So this uh, derivative of one measure with respect to another. And uh, since, uh, since uh, this, this expectation is the integration with respect to P tilde, since P tilde and P coincide on the sigma algebra uh, G, then this expectation is just the same as the averaging with respect to P. And so the theorem is proved in this case. In probability, it's, it's quite uh, uh, a common trick that uh, to prove some result, you first work with uh, non-negative random variables, and afterwards, you extend to general case by the following trick. We write a random variable y as the difference of y plus and y minus, where y plus is the maximum of y and 0, and y minus is 
the maximum of minus y and 0. Both these random variables are non-negative, so for them there exist z plus and z minus by the first part of the theorem, and we define z to be z plus minus z minus. And if we check by the linearity of the expectation, this z indeed satisfies the, uh, the, these equations. And in, in the rest of, of this lecture, I, I want to discuss various properties of conditional expectations. Maybe some question? No? For properties. So uh, let's, uh, let's first consider some special cases of the sigma algebra on which we condition. If, uh, if the sigma algebra G is the trivial sigma algebra, namely it just consists of uh, two sets, empty set and uh, the set omega, then the expectation of Y conditioned on G is just equal to the expectation of Y. If we condition on nothing, then uh, the best prediction for the value of y that we can expect is the expected value of y. That's, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's the idea. Do we see the proof of this? Do you want to see the proof? Okay, let's see. So how do we prove it? We need to show that for any event C in this sigma algebra, if we take the expectation of, uh, of um, this quantity multiplied by the indicator of C, then we get the expectation of Y times the indicator of C. Or we could uh, prove. Uh, let, uh, let C be the omega first, then the expectation of Y times the indicator omega is just equal to the expectation of uh, Y, and this is equal to the expectation of Y times the expectation of the indicator of omega which is, uh, since this is a constant, we could take it inside the expectation and we get the expectation, the expectation of y times the indicator of omega. So we see, first of all, expectation of y is a constant, so it's measurable with respect to this sigma algebra. And uh, we see that uh, this relation holds at least for omega. Same works for c equal to the empty set if you take uh, the expectation of y times the indicator of the empty set, this is just zero. And this is clearly equal to the expectation of the expectation of y times the indicator of the empty set. So for all events in the sigma algebra, uh, the desired relation is true. This object is measurable with respect to the sigma algebra. So it is a conditional expectation. Now let's look at the second extremal case and let's take G to be the whole sigma algebra F. Then the expectation of Y given uh, F is equal to Y. And why is it so? Well, uh, because uh, if we plug in y here, then it satisfies the relation, and y is measurable with respect to sigma algebra f.
So uh, this, uh, these type of two extremal cases give you some intuition about what is, does it mean uh, to have a conditional expectation. Sigma algebra carries some information about uh, the, the probability space and uh, if we condition on, uh, uh, on more information then uh, we, uh, we get more information about um, the random variable uh, y. One more simple case. So assume that uh, y is independent from the sigma algebra G. So it means that any event from the sigma algebra generated by, by Y is independent from any event from G. Then expectation of Y given G is equal to expectation of y. It's uh, intuitively it is clear if y is independent of the sigma algebra then no matter if we condition on it or not we should uh, uh, it uh, this conditioning does not reflect um, does not bring any new information about random variable y. Let's prove it. I take any event C in the sigma algebra G and I write the expectation of Y times the indicator of C. Since uh, Y is independent from the sigma algebra G, these two random variables are independent and the expectation of the product of two independent variables is the product of expectations. The expectation of y times the expectation of the indicator c. And since this is a constant, we could put it inside uh, the expectation and we get we get the, uh, this equality. This is measurable with respect to any sigma algebra. So it means that expectation y is just the conditional expectation of y given g. Notice that every time I'm writing something like this, it means uh, almost sure uh, equality uh, up to events of probability zero. So if you, if you look on, the, on this first property, then you see that uh, conditional expectation is some sort of a, a generalization of a usual expectation. Uh, the usual expectation of a, a random variable is a special case of conditional expectation when we condition on the trivial sigma algebra. So it means uh, that uh, this is an extension and we will see that some properties of the expectation also carry, um, um, also uh, remain valid for uh, the conditional expectation, but some care is, uh, is needed in, uh, in the proofs. Uh, property four is the linearity of the conditional expectation. If I have two integrable random variables and some constant a, the ex conditional expectation of a x plus y is just a conditional expectation of x plus conditional expectation of y. The proof of, uh, of this uh, property is elementary. It's just uh, 
the use of the, um, the definition and the linearity of the uh, original expectation. Now, if, uh, if a random variable x is greater or equal to zero, almost surely, then the conditional expectation of x is also greater or equal to zero, almost surely. In particular, also, if we have two random variables, x smaller or equal to y, almost surely, then conditional expectation of x will be smaller or equal than conditional expectation of y. How do we see this? Uh, well, just by contradiction. So assume that, uh, assume that the expectation is uh, not positive with probability 1. So on some event of positive probability, it will be negative. not, there exists epsilon such that the probability that the expectation of x given g is smaller than minus epsilon is bigger than epsilon. And uh, then you observe that this event is in the sigma algebra g. If you plug in this event in the, in the, um, in the definition, then you will, uh, you will get a contradiction. Everyone is happy with this proof? Or not? No? Should we do it? No? Okay, we don't do it. So, now actually, uh, even more is true than just linearity. Instead of A, we can take some random variable. And some random variable, if it is measurable with respect to G, it can be taken out from the expectation as a constant. So let Y be integrable and uh, x is g measurable, then if x time, times y is uh, integrable as well, then the expectation of uh, x times y given g is equal to x times the expectation of y given g. If we have a random variable which is g measurable, then uh, it, uh, it can be taken out like a constant in the usual expectation. A proof. Well, this proof is, uh, is a bit more complicated, but it's uh, also instructive. We consider uh, we prove this result in several steps. We first uh, consider x to be an indicator function of some event. Then we take uh, x to be a simple function, which is a linear combination of the indicators. And afterwards, we use the fact that uh, every random variable can be approximated by, uh, by uh, simple functions, and we pass to the limit. So first, uh, let x be an indicator of some event A in F, and then uh, take C in the sigma algebra G. So what we want to show is that uh, the expectation of this event is equal to the expectation of uh, the same uh, event where this expectation is replaced by this. So let's see what we have. So 
First of all, uh, we, we use the definition of the conditional expectation. So since this is a conditional expectation of x times y with respect to g, when we multiply this by the indicator c and take the expectation, we should get the expectation of uh, the original variable times the indicator of c. So Uh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. I would have uh, noticed that right now. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, so uh, we, we have the expectation of x times y. What is x? x is just the indicator of a. So we get the indicator of a intersection with c. And as it was pointed out, this is an element of uh, G. So we can uh, go back and use the definition of the conditional expectation and see that this is just the expectation of conditional expectation of Y given G times the indicator of A intersection C. And this is just the expectation of X times the conditional expectation of y times the indicator of c. So, yes. This means that the uh, identity is proved in the special case of uh, the uh, random variable x. Now, by the linearity property, it's also true for any linear combination of the indicator functions. By the linearity uh, property also holds for any x which is of the form sum over all n from 1 to capital N a n times indicator a n. Well, in the next case, let x be greater or equal to zero and y greater or equal to zero. x is g measurable, then we know that any non-negative random variable can be approximated from below by a sequence of uh, um, simple functions. What we know is that uh, the expectation of uh, xn times expectation of y given g indicator c is equal to the expectation of xn We know that uh, uh, this identity holds for every n. And now if uh, uh, we see that uh, the y is taken to be non-negative, by the uh, previous property, we know that the expectation of y with respect to g is also non-negative. So we can take uh, the uh, limit as n tends to infinity and use monotone convergence theorem to conclude that uh, both of this left and right hand side converge to the limit where xn is replaced by x.
And uh, well, by the definition, this means that this is just the conditional expectation of x times y with respect to g. In the general case, is uh, considered similarly, we just take uh, uh, write x as x plus minus x minus and write y as y plus minus y minus. And uh, apply the previous cases. Note that uh, the, uh, the case uh, that, uh, that we considered earlier when the sigma algebra um, G was, uh, was taken to be the full sigma algebra F is contained in, uh, in this example as well, uh, in this property. And uh, moreover, this property also implies that if Y is uh, G measurable, then the expectation of Y with respect to G is just equal to Y. So previously we had this property when G was uh, the full sigma algebra, but now we know that if also Y is measurable with respect to G, uh, then the expectation of Y with respect to G is just Y, because we can take it out of this expectation by this property. Okay, these are somehow properties which are uh, reminiscent of uh, properties of uh, usual expectation. Now, uh, I want to give some property which is uh, uh, specific for conditional expectations. It's called the tower property. Suppose that we have two sigma algebras, G1 and G2. And we want to condition, first uh, take the random variable and condition, uh, compute the conditional expectation with respect to one sigma algebra. And then we get some random variable. And then we take a conditional expectation of this random variable with respect to another sigma algebra. So what do we get? Integrable. So let's first average with respect to bigger sigma algebra and then with respect to the smaller one. Then what we will get is that after first conditioning on G2 and then on G1, we get the expectation of Y conditioned on G1. And uh, if we first condition on G1 and then condition on G2, then we get also the same thing, conditioning on G1. So does the second one even make sense because it doesn't even be subsigma algebra, so G2 is not a subsigma algebra of G1? Uh, G2 is not sigma algebra of G1. No. So based on the way we defined it, how does that even make sense? Like that, no, but uh, mm, these are, these are sub-sigma algebras of F. So both of them are in F. Right, I guess I just don't understand how that second one is even defined then because... Which, which one? This? It, yeah, it, it doesn't make sense how that's going to be defined because it wouldn't 
Well, this is a, this is a random variable. Uh, this is a random variable on the, uh, on the big probability space. It's measurable with respect to sigma algebra F. But it, we know more. In particular, it's measurable with respect to G1. So, but this is a particular case of some random variable uh, on, uh, defined on, uh, on our uh, space. Okay, and I'll have to think about it more. Yes. Some more questions? No? Let's see the proof. Actually, uh, the case two is, uh, is a very simple one because uh, we've just seen it here in this remark. If we have a random variable which is measurable with respect to sigma algebra G, then the conditional expectation of uh, this variable with respect to G is just uh, this variable. So in this case, we have an instance when we have a random variable which is measurable with respect to G1. And G1 is smaller than G2, so this is also measurable with respect to G2. So this is equal to that. Now let's, uh, let's prove one, and let's prove it by, uh, by the definition. So we take uh, any event C in the sigma algebra G1, and uh, in particular C is also an event in G2. Then uh, the expectation of of the conditional expectation of Y with respect to G2 times the indicator of C. C is in G1, but it's also in G2. So here we use the fact that C is in G2, and by the definition of the conditional expectation of Y with respect to G2, this is just the expectation of Y times the indicator uh, of C. And now we use that C is in G1, if C is in G1, then uh, this is equal to the expectation of conditional expectation of Y with respect to G1 times this indicator. So you see that uh, we, we get a random variable which is a G1 measurable and which satisfies the identity that this is equal to that, it means that this is a conditional expectation of this random variable with respect to G1. Something is, uh, is uh, wrong there? You don't have one inside the other, but then they have a non-trivial intersection with sigma algebra, the one G2. Probably that's a stupid question, I don't know. But so if you not have that one is finer than the other of these two sigma algebras. And condition on the one and then on the other one. Do you then get that the expectation and uh, condition on the I'm not sure you will get a nice uh, expression there. In particular, we have a special case when uh, the sigma algebra G1 is a trivial one. 
if G1 is just an empty set or omega, then we get that the expectation of the conditional expectation of y with respect to g is just the expectation of y. So if we first uh, compute the conditional expectation with respect to some sigma algebra and then we average, we get uh, the uh, usual expectation. So I, I will need uh, also to prove uh, Jensen's inequality for the conditional expectation. If f is convex, expectation y is finite and the expectation of f of y is finite, then the expectation f of y given g is greater or equal than f expectation of y given g. The proof, uh, let, let, before giving the proof, let me uh, first prove Jensen's inequality for uh, the usual expectation. Recall the proof for uh, usual expectation. Namely that the expectation f of y is greater or equal than f of the expectation y. Denote by small y the expectation of uh, y, and uh, then there exist real numbers a and b such that f of y is equal to a y plus b, and f of x is greater or equal than a x plus b for all x. If we have a convex function, we can always put a line. Uh, uh, some line below it, which at least in one point coincides with, with the function, but then expectation of f of y is greater or equal than the expectation of a y plus b, which is equal to a expectation of y plus b. This is equal a y plus b. And uh, by the definition, this is just f of y. And this is uh, f of the expectation of y. So that's, uh, that's uh, one way to prove Jensen's inequality. Um, and we will use the similar approach to conditional expectation. In general, uh, let uh, S be the set of all pairs, A and B, such that the line AX plus B, say, pairs of rational numbers, such that AX plus B is smaller or equal than F of X. Let's look at all the lines with uh, rational uh, slopes and uh, which are below F, then, f of x will be just the supremum over all uh, uh, pairs of ax plus b. You can, uh, if you have a convex function, you look at all possible lines uh, which uh, approximate f, you get something like this. And then the expectation of f of y given g will be greater or equal than 
the expectation of a y plus b given g, which is just a expectation of y given g plus b for any a b in the set S. So this is a this is an almost sure inequality. But uh, since uh, since uh, so uh, you should you should understand it uh, like this. Uh, see. For any a b in S, this is true. But since S is a countable set, this is also uh, for any a and b. This is true almost surely. But since uh, set S is countable, this is also true almost surely for all a and b. So this implies that the expectation of f y given g is greater or equal than the supremum over all s a expectation y plus b. This is f uh, of, of this. There are many other properties, uh, the limit theorems like uh, Lebesgue theorem and uh, uh, Fatou lemma and uh, various other properties which are um, valid for the expectation can also be uh, translated to conditional expectation. But let me finish uh, today with uh, one interpretation of the conditional expectation for a subclass of random variables. If, uh, namely, if a random variable has a second moment, then actually there is a geometric meaning of the conditional expectation. H sub F be the set of all random variables Y with finite uh, second moment. So this is a Hilbert space. Uh, you can introduce inner product by, uh, of two random variables by, uh, as the expectation of X times Y. And uh, similarly, I introduced the Hilbert space of uh, G measurable functions. Theorem states that expectation of Y given G is the orthogonal projection on H G. So here, of course, we assume that y is, uh, has finite second moment. So uh, how do we prove that? Uh, first of all, this, uh, this random variable is G measurable. And uh, also, by the Jensen inequality that I just proved, it has the second moment. By uh, this uh, by Jensen inequality, we can 
estimated like this, and then uh, using the fact that when we average the conditional expectation, we get the usual expectation, we have that. So uh, what uh, remains to show What remains to show is that uh, actually this is uh, the orthogonal projection. So if I if I take uh, any uh, variable x in G, then the expectation of x minus y squared is greater or equal than the expectation of this variable minus y squared. Let me denote by the expectation of y given G by z. Then expectation x minus y squared is the expectation of x minus z plus z minus y squared. Yes? Something is not clear? Mm -hmm. And uh, this is just uh, x minus z squared plus expectation of z minus y squared plus the expectation twice the expectation of x minus y, x minus z times z minus y. This is greater or equal to zero. This is what we need. We want to show that this is bigger than that. So it remains to show that this is equal to zero. If we can show that this is zero, then we are done and the expectation of x minus z times z minus y. This is uh, equal to the expectation of x minus expectation of y given g times uh, expectation of y given g minus uh, y. Now I'm doing the following trick. I'm conditioning a uh, I'm writing this expectation as first I condition on the sigma algebra G and then I average. So this is the expectation of the conditional expectation of the same thing. So I condition on the sigma algebra G, and then I average. This is the identity. But now, what is good is that uh, this random variable is G measurable. This random variable is G measurable, so I can take it out from this expectation. And uh, what remains is that conditional expectation of uh, y given g minus y conditioned on g. If you use the linearity and the properties that, uh, that we discussed, this is just equal to zero. So we proved that uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, mm, term is equal to zero. It means that uh, the, uh, the inequality is proven and uh, this means that if you work with uh, conditional expectations uh, which have second moments, then you don't really need to, uh, well, instead of working with uh, this abstract definition that I gave, you could use the more geometric uh, interpretation as the orthogonal projection. And I, I think I, I will stop here.